All right, well, let's get into it then. We've got, uh, I'm sure we could spend an hour on our first team uh, here today, but we'll, we'll try and keep it professional. Um, we're going to start with the Warriors. They finished uh, in tw uh, 12th. What are we? Yeah, 19, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 last year, sorry. Uh, 453 points for, 624 against. They averaged 18 points in attack and conceded 26 a game. Mm. Um, interesting, on the points for, the third least in the competition behind the Dogs and the Broncos. Wow. Or ahead of the Dogs and Broncos, I guess. Mm. Um, they've obviously got a lot of big ins. Sean Johnson being the biggest, uh, Aaron Penne, Ash Taylor, big outs, obviously RTS, yep. um, Peter Hiku, Fusitua, Kane Evans, Lisa Armel, Paul Turner, Sean O'Sullivan. What are your initial thoughts heading um, into 2022 for the Warriors? Um, um, <laughs> I know it's that time of the year before a ball's been kicked. I'm excited, man. I am excited. Um, looking at their team, and it's a hard, it's a hard team to pick. I went through, and what I've done is I've tried to pick the teams who, or how I would like, one how I'd like to see them, but then also how I think they might line up. And um, it's hard, man. Like you look at that that pack. So basically, guaranteed Lodge, Fanua, Blake start front row with Wade Egan, and yep. then you'd have Tohu and Josh Curran. I reckon a lot of people saying lock. I thought he was outstanding on the on the back row on in the all-stars game i think him and tohu and then you put jazz at 13 but then if you once if you do that then you've got listen to this who's fighting for a bench spot you've got sirenan bunty afoa eli katoa aaron penne murdoch masilla jack murchie that's the forwards yeah. just fighting for a bench spot yeah like that pack can keep you in so many games and like we've seen i'm, I'm hoping that sj does come back and sort of directs the game and I don't know how they're going to go, though. I, I, I'd be interested to hear where you think they're going to go. I mean, I, uh, I, I'm i still up in the air. I don't, I'd don't. i like to see Cody. Just I know he played well, so did Chanel, but I think off the back of SJ, I reckon uh, Cody can have a, another or a breakout year um, and really cement that spot. It's, yeah, so uh, another another name to add into the mix in the back row of the fours, you and Aiken. He, yeah. he finished off the year there uh, in incredible form and has signaled that he want, that's where he wants to play. Um, but but they do the, – the only issue or sort of sore spot for me was the, the three-quarter line and the lack of depth there. And, and, I'm, and I'm with you there. And that's, that, that's why in my team I would have him playing in the centres just because I don't want to weaken that position when our back row is so strong already. Like he he was outstanding last year filling in, and he might want to play. I I just think he's a, a good a good centre. Probably one that will be one of the best. I mean, and to partner Rocco Berry, who I think is going to have a standout year. I think he's yep. gonna. This going to be his year, I reckon. Um, you know, because Rocco Berry and Adam Pompey, I mean, both young, um, could both thrive. But um, I'd prefer to have Aiken there, just experience. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Aiken's got to start, at least start the season in the centres. Uh, and then, you know, we'll, we'll see where we are after a few weeks. But, I mean, the depth the Warriors have got uh, across the park, you know, obviously the, three, the centres are a bit iffy but in terms of depth. But everywhere else, it's – if you're a Warriors fan, you are – you must be licking your lips this year. This on paper, and yeah, I'm biased, but I genuinely think this is a, a top eight team and they could push for, you know, fourth, fifth, you know, if, if everything goes right, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm like that. I've, I've got them uh, on my Blake Ashford's uh, predicted ladder. I have them seventh. So finishing seventh. Um, yeah. They could all change when we do our final ladder, of course. But, um, yeah, I mean, if they stay injury-free, like we, we know depth is good to have, but if you don't have to use it, it's even better. Um, yeah. And if 
you know, we got Tohu for the year. Everyone forgot about Tohu last year, and the boys almost, you know, pulled off that top eight spot. Yep. Um, it's it's going to be a bit tricky, uh, I think, from about round six to the magic round, which is round 10. They've got the Roosters away, the Storm away, the Raiders, the Sharks, and the Rabbits. Now, that's that's a tough draw. Um, but in on the other side, I think going into that round six, they're going to have a great, I, I believe, a soft start to the year. They've got Dragons, Titans, Tigers, Broncos, Cowboys. We could see possibly these boys be 5-0. and And I think the last time they did that to start the season, or was it 3-0 or 5, they uh, made the semis. 6-0 and or 7-1. and Yeah, and made the uh, semis. Yeah. So um, I think we could see them definitely um, win those first five games. And then the, then the test of character, I suppose, round six to the magic round when you got all those um, those teams who we expect to be up there in the top four. Yeah, I had them. Uh, I said they could. My notes here, they could either be four and six, five and five, or six and four through the first ten. Mm -hmm. um, all of which I think probably has them inside the eight, yep. uh, at least through ten rounds. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. Um, I guess hot topic on the back of the All Star game. Who you said, Cody? You'd like to see partner uh, SJ in the halves? There's. I, I would love to. Um, but there's so many. I, I think Chanel's sort of a controller, like SJ, or SJ's later in his career, he still have a bit of flair, but can sort of control a game. Where well, Cody could as well, but I, I believe his best asset's running it. And if Sean's directing everything, Cody just being Cody, um, I'd, I'd just love to see him in there. Um, but then again, this is where the whole. It's interesting to see where Nathan Brown's going to go, right? Because you've got Taniela Otakolo who's could be, you know, we've seen him play a couple of games last year, could be on the bench as a hooker for Wade Egan, if Wigan, Egan doesn't play 80. Or you could have just Tavunga start 13, give Egan a spell, and then put um, Jazz at nine. Or you put Cody on the bench and play Cody at nine. Or Chanel. Um, so it's interesting. I think I definitely want to have Cody and Chanel in there. But um, I don't know if they're going to carry a if they're going to carry a hooker and just go big pack. And then there's the million dollar man himself, Ash Taylor, as well. In the match. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I can't see him getting a crack first week, personally. Yeah, I, I haven't. But then again, I haven't heard anything. He, he might be training the house down. He got the contract, so yeah. Um, and the kid's a good player. Like you can't. Tell me, you can't play NRL and say he's a bad player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, mate. Another one I seen the tab put out. I think there was a big go on uh, top eight. I'm looking at it, three twenty five for the it's, Warriors. Yeah. If you got on uh, earlier in the season, I think you could get four fifty. So sure. it's come in quite a bit. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, this host was at four fifty. So very excited. We're not um, the only two, are we? No. Excited. No. A um, couple of notes on on SJ here. Like, it's, as always, everyone's everyone has a crack at SJ. You know, he's not not a halfback. He can't lead the team around the park. Blah blah blah. I call. <laughs> he is uh, up there with one of the premier halves in the competition. Um, and I had a look at the stats uh, since 2016, um, and and last year I guess he was injured, so mm. I, I've. Haven't included where he was last year, but uh, 2016 to to 2020, he was uh, inside the top 10 every year for try assists and the top 15 for line break assists. So we can guarantee he will bring points to the Warriors team. Yep, 100. percent And and don't know whether he I wouldn't allow him to do the kicking duty, but he might even take that on as well, mate. Yep. So and, and and even though he's like you know you got Tohu captain, but Sean would come in and. I'd say he might be the oldest in the team. So, mm. like, coming in with all that experience, coming back to the team that he loves, and he still knows a lot of those boys um, that were there or younger um, when he left. So he he demands um, – he'll, he'll get a lot of respect from them boys, and I expect him to lead the way, mate. I do. And I, I'm with you. I think it's a bit of bull I think uh, I think Shawnee could be the one to hopefully break the drought and um, 
get us some silverware. Oh, goosebumps. Um, just one one more uh, sort of conundrum, I guess, on the halves situation. How, how's this? Where do you stand on this first scenario? Mm-hmm. Like Tony in the halves with Sean. Uh, you obviously want Chanel on the team somewhere. Could you squeeze him on an edge uh, as a centre? Do you gain anything putting Chanel on the team uh, over leaving Rocco or Adam Pompey out? No, nah, I don't believe so. Um, the kid can tackle Chanel. Um, yeah. I suppose he's defended at half as well, so it's one position out. I mean, you could, but I, I can't see that happening. Um, yeah, I think they're going to have him oh, in there around the halves, and then if anyone does go down, well, they're there. But oh, I, I personally think they're going to start Cody on the bench and bring him on at hooker. I, I personally think that that's what they would do. I wouldn't, but that's obviously I'm not an NRL coach. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's that's what they're going to do. I think they'll start Chanel and Shawnee, and Cody will come off the bench and play hooker. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. One final question on the Warriors before we move on. What is holding them back from seriously contending this year? Nothing. Themselves. It, it, yeah, exactly. Themselves. Like injuries. If uh, like if injuries do occur, I don't think there's anything that's. And I mean, it's easier said than done when you're outside the circle. When you're inside the circle, you know everything that's going on and things. And um, yeah, I I suppose th- there's nothing that, or from the outside looking in, that would stop them. Nice. So you've got them finishing seventh. Uh, I am going to stick with my, my brackets of fours. It's like fifth, fifth to eighth. Nice. They're, in the eight. They're in the eight. Nice, mate. All righty. Next team on the list. The Oh, hang on. Before we move on, just quickly, uh, our fearless leader, Paul Moade, has uh, sent me his notes. He's put a lot of work into this, so I should probably mention them. Um <laughs> couple of uh, bullet points here. Lack depth and star quality at the wing and centre positions. <laughs> yeah. Tohu injured and Reese Walsh suspended for the beginning of the season. I think Walsh is only out for one, one game. game. I think, yeah. Playing with Lodge. Uh, who partners East Jay? He said probably uh, Nicarima. Harris Tavita at fullback. He did play in the uh, Maldives. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he looked uh, pretty good there. For the first game, it might be his position, yes. And uh, he has said, I'm tempted to put Aiken back in the centres with the lack of depth class there, but it's unlikely Brown will go down that path. Yeah, I agree with him there. I, I Like I said, I would as well, but um, yeah, I think he might stick him in the back row. Predicted finish. This is sick. Paul Moada, you're not allowed back. Predicted finish, 13th. Why does he dislike them so much? He hates them. I don't know. It's just because they give him hope so many years and just doesn't... I don't know. I don't know. That noise is...